Hey guys and welcome back! Today I have something different to show you. The Microtik CCR2116. Note that this isn't the full review of this router, but rather just a quick unboxing and hardware overview. But without any further ado, let's get right into it! Before I unbox this router, let's quickly go through the model number. This router is the CCR2116 12G 4S Plus. The CCR stands for Cloud Core Router. The 2 means the generation, so this is the latest second generation. The 1 is the model. There is also a Microtik 2216, which is completely different from this one. The 16 stands for number of CPU cores. So in this case, there are 16 of them. The 12G means that we have 12 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. And finally, the 4S Plus means that we get 4 SFP Plus ports for 10 gigabit connections. Inside the box of this router, you can find the router itself, two power cables, two rack mount ears, and finally a pack of screws and the rubber feet. This router is equipped with an Annapurna Labs AL7300 CPU clocked at 2 GHz. It also has 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and also supports an additional M.2 SSD for expanding the storage. By default, you get 128 megabytes of it, which is enough for a basic router OS installation, but can quickly fill up after you start tweaking some settings. If I go back to the router OS installation for a bit, this router has the highest possible license level, level 6. Not to be confused with version 6, those two are totally different. This means that most, if not all the features of router OS are unlimited. For example, number of clients or PPPoE, PP2P, L2TP, OVPN and other tunnels. Let's start off with the basic info. This router fits into a standard 19-inch server rack and takes up one U of rack space. You probably know what rack units are, but if you don't, rack units are standard networking and server equipment heights. One rack unit is 4.45 cm or 1.75 inches. This was just a quick explanation and now back to the router. On the top of this router, you can see the Cloud Core Router branding. On the sides, there is nothing except for the holes for the rack mount ears. On the back, it gets more interesting because this router has dual power supply units for added redundancy. You can also see a series of fans. This router is absolutely not passively cooled. And on the front, you can see those four SFP Plus ports and a series of 12 gigabit Ethernet ports, as well as two ports, one for the console and the other one for a direct connection to the CPU. That one is reserved for management purposes. You may ask yourself, is this router right for me? And my answer is that if you are the owner of a medium-sized business or an ISP and you are dealing mainly with gigabit connections, then yes, this router is absolutely perfect for you. For smaller businesses, it's probably an overkill. Also, if you are a home labber and you are willing to pay a thousand dollars for this router, then you will get more than enough power than you will ever need. And that's all for today. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like 
and if you want to see more of these types of videos, let me know down in the comments. Also, I talked about home labbers, so if you are a home labber in need of a new router, stay tuned for an overview of another Microtik CCR router. Video is coming out next week. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching this far and I'll see you in the next one.